You'll miss the Cutie Music VIP pre-show party. We can make a deal. You can be my plus one. Don't do it. Don't blow us up. I can get you into the after party. Do you understand? I can set you up with tickets. the music. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. Blair Ballard, the Bon Vivant, very much at your service. I do hope you're all in the finest of fine forms. Now, when it comes to the perfect Bond movie, there are certain notes you've just got to hit. Glamorous locations, beautiful women, the cars, the gadgets, and of course, a thumping soundtrack and theme tune. Back in 2004, music maestro and Bond aficionado Warren Ringham gathered together a crack team of professional musicians and Bond fans their mission to create the perfect Bond tribute band. But calling them a band is a bit of an understatement. They traveled the world. They played at the uh, Roger Moore Memorial Concert in aid of launching the soundstage at Pinewood with Barbara Broccoli, Michael G. Wilson, Sir Michael Caine, all in attendance. These guys are the best of the best. Now, last year they claimed they were going into retirement, but the band is back. And they've chosen this, the iconic dome, the O2 Arena, scene of obviously the exciting pre-title sequence from The World Is Not Enough. You know where Brosnan is in the cue boat chasing the cigar girl uh, in the Sunseeker and they end up with an explosive finale with the balloon just outside the dome here on the Greenwich Peninsula. I've got a VIP pre-party uh, pre ticket to go and see the concert that's going on tonight. We're going to have Bond fans, some celebrities and of course hopefully a chat with the man himself. Let's pop in and say hello. Come on. I'm here with the absolutely incredibly glamorous Christina Wayborn, Magda for the Octopussy fans out there. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to chat to us. How Thank are you? Thank you for it having going? me. It's no. wonderful. Oh, now, I've been doing some research. Now, obviously, you actually are a kind of Bond girl in real life, aren't you? I mean, you were a, a track star. You know, you, were, you had a 100-meter sprint in 11 seconds. Yes. You ride horses. I You're do. You're a gourmet cook. Um, and you were pretty kick-ass in the, in the stunt scenes. You did most of your own stunts, didn't you? I did, all of them. I mean, how was it when you did the back the backflip off the balcony? How did that all work out? Well, you know, we did the backflip at Pinewood Studios, actually, okay. uh -huh. uh, into a, um, an air mattress that oh, was cool. about 20 feet down. 20 and, feet? And uh, then we did the pickup shot in India. That's when a long, I come down, yeah, it's yes. a long way to so go. there's a long way to go. But you landed but it, so gracefully. It was actually about 68 feet or something in all. Crikey. So, yeah, it was an inventive uh, stunt to say the least. But how they wanted to do it from the beginning was they had this vision of me being shot out of a, like a slingshot. But then uh, John Glenn, the director, said, no, we can't do that because we're going to need her in London because they figured, you know, I would die on the you, way exactly, back. Exactly, you know, your insurance, so, insurance so shot anyway. up on that day. <laughs> yeah, they would have shot their insurance on that one. Oh, crikey. But I mean, you also, obviously, in the, in the fight scenes, two things happen. One, is it right that you hit one of the stuntmen so hard in his stomach that he had to go to sick bay, isn't that right? I don't know. Did I put him in sick bay? Well, you put him. I think he was like, well, you know, laying down. I think he was laying down. Laying down gracefully. Yeah, yeah. 
But also, didn't you break some of your toes? Well, what I happened? did. Uh, we had uh, this bazooka that one of the guys was using. And when I'm supposed to hit it, it was supposed to be interchanged with the plastic one. But in the, you know, the craziness, the we forgot to... Uh, put the plastic one in so when I hit it I hit it really hard thinking you know it's not gonna hurt but it was the real deal so it oh, oh my god but you, you but sold you know it on what? like you a trooper you don't do anything you just let the toes heal but now I must tell you after all these years I'm having a little problem with uh, you know arthritis in there because stuff sets in when you get Who's old. Who's Arthur anyway? <laughs> we don't know who Arthur is and we can't find him anywhere. Mr. Writers. Mr. Writers, exactly. But I mean you got the gig in the first place because um, you played obviously Greta Garbo. Yes. Um, yeah, in I the played, Silent Lovers. Yeah, I played Greta Garbo um, and um, they had seen it. The Broccoli saw that and then I had, uh, we had done this incredible poster with me sitting on a Bengal tiger which was, looked very bondish and very, you know, octopusy ish Perfect, Because, perfect. you know, India, India and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And they just went, cubby the went, girl. that's it. I'd smash no, it. No discussion. <laughs> so I just said, sure, okay. Perfect. I mean, but also, didn't you, um, you did a, 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 an episode of, um, is it that 70s show? Which was the one you did with, um, Bar with Barbara Carrera yeah, yeah. and that Tanya was seven, yeah. from uh, Tanya Roberts, Tanya Roberts and, and also Maud Adams. Maud Adams all together. And I mean, yeah. didn't wasn't Barbara, Barbara Carrera originally going to be Octopussy at one point, but she changed her mind and, and went, went with to, Sean. Yeah, Sean. To I prefer, can't blame her for that. I, I'm a Roger guy. I mean, I love I mean, Sean I, to bits. I, well, you know, I'm a woman. I kind of like Sean. He's got uh, the an a animal lot. magnetism. Yeah, animal. I like animals. <laughs> animals. <laughs> Thank you, but you know, but that was an amazing collection of Bond girls, all yeah. in one. one oh thing. yeah, and we're still friends. That's what's oh, so fantastic. You've got a bond. Of course, we lost uh, Tanya, but I and know, she was yes. such a lovely girl. That was. But uh, the others are still, we're still alive and kicking. And you're having, you meet, do you meet up? I mean, it's been a big year for you, obviously, with the Octopus Season celebrations. Have you been doing lots of these kind of uh, events? Uh, there has been a few this year because of the 40th anniversary of Octopussy. So, I've had a wonderful time. You have Came fun, to yeah. Peterborough oh, yeah. and did the uh, train station there while oh, we filmed. Yes, of that was in June. Uh -huh. So I've been. To, this is my third trip uh, to, to Europe this year. Now, are you looking forward to the concert tonight? Are you? What's your favorite themes? We're going to ask all the guys what their favorite yeah, music is. Well, I mean, it's all incredible. It's hard to pick one, isn't it? Sure, sure, sure. So, you know, well, so... We see, we're, just, we're doing this before the actual gig, so we're, yeah. I, mean, I might see you after and be like, oh my God, that was so amazing. Yeah, but, you know. yeah. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, well, I'm so thankful. Thanks a lot for taking yeah. the time to have a quick chat. But yes, It's been an absolute likewise. pleasure. Thank you. Great stuff. Magda. Thank you for having us here. It's <laughs> lovely. Great stuff. It's great to be back in England. Well, it's nice to have you back. I missed You're it. Welcome. Well, you know, open arms all the time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Right, I'm here with Del, Octopussy star, <laughs> turban legend. <laughs> That's good. Uh, just came up with that. Um, nice to see you, Del, anyway. Blair, Excellent. good to see you too. And it's actually turban expert. Turban expert. Way, turban expert on the call sheets for the film. Oh, cool. Which I worked on in 1982. How did it all come about? I mean, because you were inter you know, intimately involved with a whole... It's well, it's a bizarre thing. So, who would thought a hairstyle could get me onto a set of a Bond film? So, <laughs> I in 1982, and this is even more bizarre. Myself and my brothers were running a rock disco, a heavy metal roadshow in Peterborough. Yes, you don't it, seem. We, 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 no, I know, I know. So, you know, I don't seem like a headbanger, but I was. <laughs> and we were the sing, infamous Sing Brothers Roadshow. And um, one night I got a call, uh, a gentleman said, you're Sing, Sing Brothers Roadshow. I said, yes. And I thought he wanted to book a disco. It's like, you, his questions were, are you a Sikh? I said, yes. Are you, do you wear a turban? I said, yes. I said, where's this going to? Mm -hmm. And before I hung up, uh, he said, I'm from Eon Studios and we need you to help us, if you can. And I'm like, okay, what do you need from me? Hello. I know. I said, you know, has Roger broken a leg? You see me <laughs> Um, and so I, the next day, my brother and I actually went to the Poshish Hotel in Peterborough and uh, we were met by a guy with an octopusy lanyard and uh, it took us up to what was the top suite. They booked out the entire floor and I still thought this was some kind of crazy joke. Uh, 
arrived there under this cloud of smoke on one side I noticed Roger Moore with his biggest cigar in the world and thought, he did like a oh snowy. my god this has just got real that's James Bond over there and uh, Kabir Bedi walked over who played Gabinda in the film now he's an Indian actor doesn't wear a turban and um, they sort of looked at us and they said we have some trouble because the turban that we've got tie tying on him it's falling off can you tie a turban can you tie this on his head and I looked at the material they gave me and I said no they said, what do you mean, no? You said you could tie a turban. I said, I can tie a turban, but that's a bath towel. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it's only six foot long. And so I said, but this is a turban. And out of my bag, I produced what was a grey turban. Uh, it's about 13 foot of material. Seriously? 13 foot, yeah. And so I now laid this onto Kabir's head. And he was like, wow, this is not going anywhere. It's not moving. It's brilliant. And... Um, they then sort of said to my brother and I, we would like to hire you to do this gig. Um, 50 pounds a day. Um, seeing as the extras, 1982, we're getting 12 pound a day. That's uh, good money then, uh, yeah. And I said, yeah, that's great, 50 pound a day each. And they said, no, 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 so we're at 50 pound for the two of you, 25 each. I said, no, 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 no. we are the Singh brothers. Um, and the main reason was because we both had summer jobs. And I thought, if one of us can't do it, the other can. But we wanted the money. Let's, so. Well, they said, no, £25 each. I said, I'm taking my turban, I'm going home, thank you. Oh, and I actually started, so you know. wa started walking out. And it was Kabir who actually came along and said, no, no, I want these guys. <laughs> and I want the turbans. And he got us that gig. And so we got basically paid £100 a day for five minutes' work. Brilliant. But the, the, the truth is, the turbans are magnificent. So much so, Kabir loved the grey. And he asked the wardrobe guys to change the turban they'd actually had for him and the suit. So the wardrobe guys weren't very popular. So when you see that grey suit, it went with the grey turban he's running across the train. That's thanks to you That's guys. thanks to my school turban. That was it. That was your school turban? That was my school turban. No way! And the other part of the deal was, they said, we want, you know, when I said to them, where do you buy the ones that you tied on the bath towel from? They said, from India. I said, it's the worst place to buy a turban in India. They saw you guys coming. <laughs> uh, and then they wanted some additional turbans. Now, and now I was going off to university. I didn't need my school terms anymore. So I actually then, they had four more and I actually sold them to them at 50 pound a pop. So I-, I Money, <laughs> show me the money. So when I met John Glenn <laughs> a few months ago and I had to apologize, I said, John, the reason your film ran over budget is because of me. <laughs> Charging for those turban tying days. Classic. But it was magnificent. It was a wonderful experience working on a movie. Who knew 40 years later, you know, uh, tying a turban would get me still talking and meeting lovely Christina who I know you Your best mates, your besties. We're, we're yeah. besties now. We, I was, to be honest, she's not watching this, but I was so in awe of her and I was only a schoolboy and I had this massive schoolboy crush on her at the time but I was too scared to tell her. So. We all did, we all but did. I know, but I can tell her now, still got a massive crush on her uh, and she's lovely and getting to meet people and in fact, crazy enough, um, about 35 years ago, I actually um, met Kabir again via a Skype oh, call. Wow. Oh, cool. Because when Kabir uh, left the set, he gave me his Beverly Hills phone number, address, and everything. I went off to university and as a student got drunk and lost the damn stuff. No! I way. know, I know. And then, crazily enough, about 30 years later, it fell out of a, 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 a kind of a biology book I had. And so I, you got it. You I got it. Mind I, you, his numbers changed probably by now. I, I phoned it, and I think only Brad Pitt picked up. So <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know it's crazy. So, <laughs> so it's Hollywood, and so um, so no. But we got reunited again, and again, just a magnificent uh, experience. Oh, well, I mean, I mean. Octopus is really taken, I mean, because I loved it. I used to live in India. I'm okay. oh, sorry, no, I lived in Muscat in Oman, but we used to go across to, okay. to Delhi and up to, up to Kashmir. And then um, my mother was born in Mumbai. So we got a lot of connections there. So when Octopus came out, it really did resonate with me. And I, I mean, I loved obviously all the scenes set in India, but it was just, you know, the, it's a big slice of my childhood. So I'm really glad it's getting the attention and the, and the love that, um, that it, 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 it deserves. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, for me also, I was quite lucky because I had access to all areas. I was able to, you know, after my five minutes of really hard work tying a man's turban, uh, I literally had the day to myself and often I would sit there and Roger would be on the stoop of his trailer with a cigar, as always. And, um, I, you know, I got, actually made friends with Roger. That summer was magnificent. I actually... Rather than be a bit of a fanboy, because I'm a bit of a film buff, I got talking to Roger about The Wild Geese, because Richard Burton, oh, my, yeah. Richard Burton, yeah, my yeah, favourite yeah. actor of all time, was in there. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to not dish the dirt, but learn more about it. And he told me some great stuff. I found out what Roger Moore's favourite film was, which is amazing. What's his favourite film? High Noon. 
Oh wow, that makes oh, well high noon. And, um, and 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 I even sort of went to far as saying that if they ever recast that film, he could do the Gary Cooper role. And he said, "Mr. Singh, some films should never be remade." That last scene, though, obviously, it's all, the last bit is all done, and it's all done in chronological. It's done to you know in yeah. real time, isn't it? Yeah. And and you know it was wonderful just being able to. And Roger was his sense of humour was so self-deprecating because around that time, Warner's had just brought Sean Connery back to Never Say Never Again. So whenever the journalists turned up, they always try to pitch it like, Roger, the public obviously prefers Sean's Bond, that's why he's back, whatever. And I love the way Roger handled it. He was like, well, look, Sean does this thing, I do mine. And they were best friends. And he said, there's things that Sean does that I can't, and there's things that I can do that Sean can't. And then Mealy jumped on that. It's like, what is it you can do, Roger, that Sean can't? Here's some scandal. And he said, show you. And they all came close. He did that eyebrow lift. <laughs> the, the Roger Moore eyebrow lift and he goes Sean can't do that <laughs> uh, and then at the same time he said but I can't grow a hairy chest oh, uh, man. Uh, and so he was lovely he's the most beautiful warm gentleman ever and I value that summer with him uh, you know and Kabir and Christina and all these gangs so you know like I said bizarre to think that any would have thought 40 years later this thing had a life of its own and you know, I'd be you know meeting people from the movies again and people you know, approached me I mean I did have one lady at the 43 Union I think her husband was probably the Bond fan and she got dragged along and she was just desperate to kind of like be involved she came to me and said I love the bit in Octopussy the film where you crush those dice <laughs> and I love her I sort of said I'm afraid that wasn't me that was Kabir the only part in the film I'm not in it but my hairstyle is um, <laughs> but uh, you know I, I let her down gently oh bless her anyway look Del, thanks so much for taking time to have a chat. Amazing little nuggets of, uh, you know, of, of what life on set was like on Octopus Pit. Thanks a lot, Del. Blair, thank you very much. Pleasure. See you Let them through our job. Ah, Mr. Ballard. I thought you were assassinated in Hong Kong. I was. This is my second life. You only left twice, Mr. Ballard. Well, guys, I'm here with two uber octopusy legends, Tony and David Meyer, who obviously played Mishka and Grishka, villainous knife throwers extraordinaire. Yeah, he's got to How's your, How is your year going? Because obviously, octopusy, it's, it's your 40th anniversary. Have you had loads of fun going to loads of events, a bit like this one? Yes, rather too many. No, not too many. It's <laughs> lovely. It's just, you know, it hasn't been a big year for, for work, actually. It's, it's, it's difficult when you get to a certain age. Um, Distinguished as and, you are, though. Uh, <laughs> but we, yes, it's lovely to get, meet there's a lot of people who still remember the movie and want to see us both. It's 40 years, I mean, I don't know. What's, it's not 25, it's not 50. It's, I know, it's, it's a bit not, of a niff one. It's like 50 um, or 75 would make more sense, wouldn't it? Any basically. But I did think that it's interesting that 40 years ago there was no Netflix and there was no... Um, mobile phones, uh, there were no DVDs, and, and films are kind of how meant a different thing almost, you know, there are people... It's a real event. You, you went, you, 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 you had a video, you watched it a lot in your bedroom, you know, or whatever. Um, and I think that's um, why it's, people have got quite fun with it. Well, I loved, I mean, I, I, was, I grew up in the Middle East, and we used to go across to India quite a lot, so it's got a massive place in my heart. Oh, yes. Well, there you are. And that, 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 the that's, hotel, that's I think, still shows the film regularly. <laughs> exactly. In the middle yes. of the lake. Yes, and, yes and they, every day they play, play the film, the octopus. Every, every day. day. I think it's really every day, yeah. There. I know. <laughs> you must get there. No. Well, maybe we could retire there. That maybe would be a good one. Yes. yes. Have, you know, <laughs> have you know, the grapes you know, dropped into your mouth by some you know, beautiful... Uh, but beautiful. It, has, it has a bit of everything, and yeah. Maud and... and Christina are wonderful, and, and and Roger just is very comfortable. And, uh, did he play any practical jokes with you guys on set? I know he's famous for his practical jokes. No, he did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he gets to stuff me in drug crime, so oh, know, and that, I guess that's that's just all he has to do. And um, uh, you might say our pra uh, he gets to wear my costume, which so I have the last laugh on him. Really, that shirt is coming up for auction. I'm going to a prop store. You know, the, oh. um, the they they sell memorabilia and props and 
It's coming up on. Slight, slight. Oh, you've got a slight nod. Oh, brilliant. To my character. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, David. I did. Bump David. I did bump into him ten or so years later in the dentist's waiting room. Oh, yeah. We both shared a very good dentist, and I just said, "Oh my God, it's Roger across the room." And I walked up to him. I nearly killed you ten years ago, <laughs> so close, Roger. So close. Um, and oh, oh, uh, I said, "Do you remember?" He said, "I remember the shirts." <laughs> Indeed. But yeah. bless him, he thought maybe I, he was being a bit, bit, bit standoffish. And uh, I was on my way out, and he, he came off his chair and walked across to the hallway and shook my hand and said, "How lovely to see you again," oh, as he remembered who I was he's so generous, and he really he, he oh, was a yeah. really I mean, a nice I was man rung up by somebody who was writing about him and I said oh yeah no he was really nice he gave me a lift home you know oh no he's, oh, and nobody's got any bad he things said, I haven't found anybody to say anything bad about him <laughs> it's hopeless you know? he was a lovely guy um, I mean but um the fact that he he wore that costume I think um sort of helped Makes it look like I go on, you know. I think you that's lived more, on in more, that show. more to do in the film <laughs> than I actually did. You know. It was confusing. There were about a dozen people walking around in those shirts after a while because there were the stuntmen who were doing it. But you got your danger money, Martin, surely, for being up on top of the train. No way. They should have paid me much more. <laughs> uh, it was just over the weekend, so I couldn't even ring my agent. Oh. Um, <laughs> Would one of you mind going? Would you mind going up on top? Actually, I was living a little fantasy. I'd always, I'd seen the Lone Ranger do it, and uh, you know, on black and white television all that time ago, um, or was it Wells Fargo? One of the two. But did you have the Lone Ranger? Did you have the, the you know, the um, the William Tell overture in your, well, in your some, mind when you were doing it? Some things were like that. Yeah, yes, uh, it was yeah. a fight on top of a train, moving train. That's and he's and very good too. I could. Actually, I, a, a nice story is that the, the, the one guy who did the wonderful free running at the beginning of Casino Royale, oh yeah, Foucault, yeah. Um, uh, who, who was also shining, signing autographs at the end of the room uh, in London once, and I went along with a picture of me on the, on the train, and I said, this is what we did in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> the black just, and white. But he was so sweet. He said, oh, I have always wanted to do that on a moving train. How exciting. And like, so good, bonded good old love is we signed to my great friend. I've got his photo to my great friend David, signed by him. Oh, so so I, was, uh, I was completely starstruck. Well, well that's, you know, I mean, that's very him. bonding for you, though, because, you know, a lot of the times these days, it's all done CGI or they yes, got, you know. Exactly. So good on you for but he was. About Octopussy was, as I said, it was before CGI and as well as um, Netflix and, and a plethora of TV programs, mm. you know. Um, <coughs> but um, <coughs> we've got a tiger's head, stuffed tiger's head pushed out of the jungle. <laughs> it's like my <laughs> John says, oh, I think we got away with it. I'm not sure of the job, but it's wonderful. It's like a sort of deconstruction of cinema, you know. It's like Brechtin, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. It's like just presents, you know, <laughs> and, uh, bear and, and, you know, exit with a bear or whatever as well, you know, yeah. But yeah. people no, still and, do and say. And it has that charm and, and people li like it. It had a mix, didn't reason. it? It yeah. had a mix because it had, you know, the, the sit, you know, the Barbara Woodhouse kind of sit with the, with the, with the, with the tiger. Which and then you, and, and the tar, yeah, I know it's, well, you know, grew up with Barbara Woodhouse and, yeah, we had <laughs> dogs. But also yeah, the and Tarzan said, swing. But then you've got the really serious stuff as well. It's yeah. really... And, and we're, we're quite serious, that's, actually. You're very it? Yes. Yeah, menacing. It's absolutely. a good opening. It's well, a good opening. Oh, that's over the glint. That's the, of the knife, absolutely. It is, yeah. We were interviewed by some you know, young chaps from up north and to put on their... And I said, we, we really like Octopus. Like, Why? Oh, <laughs> oh it's so but that's basically what they said. It was like a mixture. They liked the mixture. Or I, the, I mean, whatever. I think it's, it's, got, it's really... And also, I mean... I know at the, at the time there was the conflict, obviously, the battle between, you know, Connery and... and but there were three Bond films, actually, that came out in the same... Well, not Bond films, there were three Bond actors on screen. You had, obviously, Roger with you guys. You mm. had Sean Connery with yeah. um, Never Seen Ever Again. And also, you had um, Lazenby appearing as a guest on um, The Man with... The, you know, um, Man From U.N.C.L.E. Oh, really? As really? J.B. Um, in an Aston Martin with all the gadgets, How naughty. all at the same time, on the same night in 1983. <laughs> we there was never, I, I wasn't conscious of that when we were making it, I must admit, but um, 
It's funny, we, we, we got it. I mean, the Bond films have a look, um, and there's something about a, a Bond film. Um, it's not necessarily about doing just the camera angles, or this, it's difficult to define. And, and, and we had it, you know. Um, uh, I think it was peak Bond. I think Rod, that era of Roger Moore is what I, because I grew up with Roger Moore. He's my Bond, uh -huh. and uh, that look, that um, you know, that that sort of feel of the, I think it's the camera, the film quality, or the way it was shot. It just that's my childhood, and that's what, my favourite Bonds are the Roger Moore Bonds. He didn't um, didn't play any jokes on us. I think he was because he knew actually we were new, newbies, and probably we just wanted. <laughs> Do you be a little calming down, a little, a little, make you feel secure? He had a wonderful relaxed thing. But, you see it on the screen. Yeah, he's, <laughs> right, he's almost know. horizontal, basically. But, but, horizontal but, yeah. but um, he, he carried that all the way through, so you felt very in kind of in safe hands. You, uh, but you both, I mean, at different times, because um, you obviously studied at drama school. Yes. And, but but um, but Tony, you went to you went to Cambridge and read Architect. You were oh, saying earlier uh, on. Yes, that's true. But then you circuitously yeah. came yeah. around and you were in <laughs> Stephen Burkhoff's company at one point, weren't you? Yeah. Um, what was he like? I mean, he's terrifying. I always find him like he seems like uber scary. But yeah, it was funny. We ended oh, up well, and we doing the, all the film all together. Yeah. 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 In, in in the London Theatre uh, Group uh, later, um, it was great days. Um, it's a magazine called Time Out. You could look in and still and going. It would yeah. stay, um, you know, uh, casting. And, and actually, I met a wonderful actress called Paula Diallo Sati, and she said, "Oh, I'm working with Stephen Burkhoff. We're doing the production of the trial." I said, "I'd done, I'd done at Cambridge. I'd done two productions of the trial." Oh, wow! <laughs> so you're not well, was very in those days. Very, 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 very. <laughs> and, um, so um, uh, I said, and we're still looking for something. So I, I went along and we rehearsed in this little church hall in Islington no and way. put on the first production of the trial in, in the Oval. Oh, yeah. and, um, and I turned up in a few things, uh, other things that he did later on. So it was extraordinary then suddenly to be doing, you know, uh, James Bond. And I know we, we all got, always got on. I mean, you know, some people find it a bit difficult, but uh, he no, was always, no it could be very well. He was very sweet to us. We both. used to laugh. We had a wonderful time. I There's can imagine early, he's, you know. Early days. I was and working the, with a, a guy called Lindsay Kemp oh, yes, at the, the same David time. Bowie, so it was uh, yeah. talk and cheese. Who taught David yeah, yeah, Bowie yeah, 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 yeah. how to be a success on had stage? David Bowie, really, yeah. Because he wasn't a success on stage before he met well, there Lindsay. There you go, yeah, absolutely. Have so to say. <laughs> so I, you learnt a lot with, uh, about her. Uh, I learnt a lot with him. But yeah, Stephen said, well, you can't go, go to work with me, David. I said, well, you're all so butch in your company. He said, oh, it's just an act, David, it's just an act. <laughs> um, and, and everyone, everyone who works with Burkhoff ends up doing a Burkhoff interpretation <laughs> where, when you're working with him, because he's that kind of guy. But he's, uh, he was always very sweet to us both. Oh. But he had a, had a, had a bad reputation. Both, 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 both Lindsay and, and Stuck, Burkhoff, who had worked together, actually, in, I think it was, Philip Savile did the production of Hamlet. Which oh, they, yeah. They, they played the players. Oh, oh right. Um, but um, it stood in very good stead playing circus performance or whatever. Exactly. Um, I think that was one of the reasons we got the job. We were, the job. We were yeah. working. And we had been to be Billy Smarts in our, our early days. Oh, yeah. Um, circus. Yeah, Smarts so, yeah, absolutely circus. The, 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 um, uh, it was days of tigers and lions and, and um, you know, when it was it all okay. It worked very well, that, that, again, that, that, that whole circus thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, um, um, was beaut beautifully We've both got, got been together. in the famous uh, circus production of Peter Brooks, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, too. Wow, yes, You know, the yes. white, white spets and the well, swings and the round Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, physical theatre was, was your, uh, well, your thing, uh, your So, I think, I think that, I think that's Another nice thing about Octopus, there's, 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 there's no skiing. <laughs> But Roger Moore was quite a good skier, wasn't he? I, I know, think he I was know. good. I mean, everybody, uh, uh, every other one has, you know, skier. Oh, you know, no, no, yeah. It uh, never gets me, I must admit. You're not, you're not your bag. No, no, no. And I think that's, I think that's something to be said for. <laughs> it has the train. We had a nice time up in Neen Valley Railway. Oh, yes. Um, that was one of the... Oh, Octopussy celebrations this year. Oh, did year. you go, did you go we, to that? I actually went up there. Oh, cool. And I did kind of go, I did say, 
can I climb up on top of a carriage again? Oh, that would have been so but, cool. But they said, no, nah, health and safety. Well, health I'm and safety nightmare. Nightmare. So I climbed the film when they're moving. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't no matter. Problem. Exactly. That didn't matter. <laughs> I've been found. But, um, oh. but I climbed up halfway. And so there's a picture of me sort of looking over looking the edge of the carriage just for fun. Oh, but I was talking to but it was. Just, Sorry. Yep, but no, that's the end of the story. I really. was talking to Paul Weston, who was one of the other statmen who did the. Oh, bless, yes. Yeah, who did um, the, the looking up, and they had to duck down just when the, when the actual coming yes. under the bridge. Yeah. And he said it was like you know another coat of paint or a bit of more hair, and he would have been, you know. Yeah. But I was going to well, ask you one last thing as well, because um, you've got another Bond connection, because you were in London Spy with Ben Whishaw. Indeed. his father, weren't yes. you? Yes, yeah. I was seeing that. I thought, oh my gosh, my gosh. That's David there, so um, how did that go? Oh, wonderful. Yes, I, I sort of joked with him about, I mean, I said, I, I love his thing of Q, and it's a brilliant little performance, and it was great playing his father. And I said, well, you can tell your director, Sam Mendes, that um, I'm doing the original fight on a top of a train, <laughs> so which, of course, he uses as an opening sequence. Exactly, yeah. He does, and he did say he was re referencing uh, to earlier there you go. So, so he might have had it in mind. You blazed the trail for him. <laughs> he's laid the groundwork. Show him how it was done. Oh, oh he's, he's a brilliant little actor. It's fantastic. Oh, he's yeah. my brother's acted him, and he did a play at the um, uh, at the, the national. Um, and you know, it's absolutely brilliant. Lovely guy. Very gently spoken, but very warm, and you know, lovely. And who look, I've, I've taken up so much of your time. The guys are going to want to chat. Thanks so much to David Pleasure. and Tony. Absolutely wonderful to meet you. Thanks so much nice for your time, guys. Too, Thanks so much. Thanks so yeah, much. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, Absolutely wonderful. Pleasure. David and Tony. I'm here with the utterly gorgeous Martine Beswick. How are you? Thanks so much for having a chat to us tonight. How are you? I'm actually quite well today. Yeah? Yes. It's a busy old night. There are lots oh, of... It's so word. busy tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very now, busy. Now, obviously, from a Bond perspective, you, you paved new ground. You broke new ground because you were the first Bond girl, Bond woman, to be in two Bond films. Yep. How did that come about? Because obviously, you, first of all, you were the gypsy girl in From Russia With Love. Yep. How did that come about? Well, okay. So basically, I mean, I was sent up. I had no idea what Bond was. Now, being a Jamaican, I should have known Ian Fleming, James Bond, not a clue. So I went to this lovely MCA agency who had written me and said, come and see us. So I went to them and I arrived there and there were these 12 seats, suits around the table who kept going, Bond. Bond. I had no idea what they're talking about, and they said, decided to send me on an audition for Bond, and that is the moment when I met Terence Young, and he took one look at me, and it was for Honey. Oh, for Honey, Ch of Honey Rider for Doctor yeah, for Doctor yeah. No. And I thought, no, 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 this, I did, this is beyond me. And anyway, he looked at me, and he he got this like idea. And he said, he looked at me, he went, you don't have enough, go and get some experience. I have an idea for you. And of course, this is, this is amazing because, you know, this doesn't happen often. Anyway, he said, go and get some experience. You're too young for this. Uh, you're not right for this. So anyway, so off I went. And when... So Russia with Love came up, and he said, "Now you're going to be my gypsy girl," and I went, "Oh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but in the meantime, yeah. I had met him because my my one of my dear friends, Chris Blackwell, had worked on Doctor No. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, when he he was back in London, I got to meet Terence socially. And we became friends. And so that's when he said, you're going to be my gypsy girl. girl. Now look, the fight scene obviously is what you're most famous for, you know, from Rush With Love. Now, is it true that the cat fight that you had, was the other actor, Eliza, Eliza Girl? Eliza Girl, yeah. Wasn't it, there was a bit more uh, anger and, you know, she was quite, quite angry and aggressive. Not really, i tell you what it is. I mean, first of all, we spent three weeks rehearsing this mm -hmm. and we actually did work together quite well 
but she was, I have to say, she was never a sister. My Bond girls. She was never a Bond girl in that, because the sisterhood, you know. My, these are my sisters. I love my girls, sure. you know. So I didn't really have the connection with her. But we did have a good fight. Yeah. Um, you know, she wasn't, I couldn't. We did a good fight. So I thought she had like a bit of, I thought she was, just, you know, thought that you were a bit too close to Terence Young and she got jealous and... No, just well, the, there was a little bit of yeah. that, but the thing is that she wasn't really aggressive, you know. In fact, if anything, I was probably more aggressive. And there was a moment when they were trying to get me to kind of... Really? And I, said, and I went... Ah, you know, okay. But no, I mean, no. But, um, but, um... Obviously, you broke new ground because you were in two Bond films. The second one, obviously, probably even more famous, were Thunderball, and we all know the story that you, you know, you arrived on set and you were, you know, you were not looking as tanned, maybe, because being an no, island girl. I was white. In <laughs> fact, I was grey because I've been partying, I've been dancing all night. Modern girls, you know. Yes. Yeah. It's the sixties. Yeah. Having yeah. fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I hadn't seen the sun in a year <laughs> so I was like really I was grey not just white grey so that's what I had to do when I arrived there you to lie on the beach eat lots of lovely yummy food yeah just and I was really thin so Terence demanded that I'd be put on the cold sheet every day for two weeks to sun myself and I I mean there are all these photographs of me kind of dancing and doing stuff and in you know, and hanging out, um, getting a tan. Nice work if you can get it, really. And eating anything I wanted. Bloody perfect. I know. No, I mean, you're, but you're an island girl. Yep. You know, I mean, you're from Port Antonio in Jamaica. Yeah. Now, I was looking into this before I can... It's a bit, bit of research. Now, Port Antonio, I mean, is beautiful, Blue Lagoon, and it's got... Mm. But it was used a lot in No Time to Die. I and I know. didn't know that. You didn't know yeah, that? No. Yeah, they used it for the, the Market Square, you know, where um, Daniel Craig is careering around in his, um, his Land Rover. They are, some of it doubles up for Cuba as well. The seaplane takes off from St. Margaret's um, air, air field. Wow. Um, and there's, a, there's actually, I don't, I don't know if you know Piggy's, it's a, jer a jerk restaurant, Jamaican jerk uh, chicken restaurant. And apparently it was so popular, Daniel Craig, to call the, um, you know, to call the crew there every night to go and eat there. Wow. But, oh, we should have gone. I know, but, what's there? but apparently, just after filming, it burnt down, and Daniel Craig loved it so much. I know it did. But he was so such a fan, he actually helped support and, you know, uh, fund the, the rebuilding. So there was a happy oh. ending, so it was all right. But, you know, but Port Antonio, amazing, I mean, absolutely gorgeous place to... to so that's where you were born. Yeah. But now you're a... You're a an island girl. Yeah. Now you almost, obviously, were Honey Rider in well, almost, almost. Ever. But it was taken up by you know. I mean, Ursula Andress is Swiss German, so not massively, you know, you know, so Jamaican appropriate. Now look, can we play a little? I've had this kind of like thought, you know, the little game we could play about what if. Now, what if you actually had been, you know, Honey Rider? You taken the role from Ursula Andress and actually been, you remember the iconic scene of her coming out of the, the, the water with a conch shell and she's singing, what's she singing? Under the mango tree. <laughs> now, would you be game for a laugh to sing a, just a few lines I with me? You well, why not? Why I mean, not? I do love a, a sing song. I mean, but I have to say, Ursula. She did smash it. Well, there wasn't that, wasn't it? She, was, she yeah. was so hot. And she became a friend afterwards. Oh, right, that's fantastic. And she was so sweet. But look, I'll get some words. We've got some words. And we'll just sing the first opening couple of lines, just okay. for a bit of fun. Okay, are okay. you going to lead? I'll, well, yeah, okay. well, I'll be okay. Sean and you can be Ursula, okay? Well, okay. you know, you be you. Underneath the mango tree, my honey and me. Who's that? Mango soon. Underneath the moonlit sky, me honey and I can sit hand in hand. Underneath the moonlit sky, me honey and I can make fairy land. Mango, banana, and tangerine, sugar and ackee and cocoa bean. When we get married, we make them grow. 
and my little child in a row. Oh, thank you. Oh, is that classic? Thanks. I, I should have done it. I should have done it in a real Jamaican accent. Well, you were slipping into that. I could hear that yeah, coming I know, through. I was trying to come through. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Anyway, the absolutely inimitable, wonderful Martine Beswick. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, how was your night tonight? It was absolutely amazing, yeah. Great seats, great time, and Kerry could really belt it out. Always a winner. I'm having a lot of fun tonight. Uh, it was a great experience. It was um, such a difference to watching things on, online that they do, but actually being in here in person, is, you just get a, a real feel for it, much more. It gets you in the and set, some, doesn't it? And some of the, I mean, like, for instance, some of the songs you haven't heard for a while, and then you think, ah, oh. so, like, um, when they sang uh, the Chris Cornell for uh, You Know My Name, that resonated with me, which I didn't think it would, if that makes sense. I it's, was welling up, man. There were yeah. moments where I was seriously welling up. It's quite emotional, isn't it? It is. Just I, seeing I, James I, Bond music I'm, I'm welling again. up. We had a great... Um, the music did get me going. People have spoken about this uh, Q D music uh, events before, and this is my first time attending it. And Mind you, I'm a virgin. I'm a, I'm a, you know, oh, I'm so a, we're, we're both virgins We're both virgins. We're both virgins. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. The, the fact that they can make you love songs that you never actually fully appreciated before is incredible. And the way they did, they did it makes you appreciate it in a whole new way. It was not the things I expected to love that I yeah. absolutely was like, oh my God, that really resonated. It really hit me in the, in the chest. We did a, a, a pre-walk here. So we did uh, oh, yeah. Albion is Not Enough. We started off at the MI6 building and ended up here. And you didn't get shot. Nobody came up no. with big guns. and. But we did. We did go down the Thames. We, were, we used the boat, the Uber boat, and we went oh, down the Thames. Oh, man, that's so, so cool. Um, right at the start of the show, they played the uh, cue boat chase music. So that was a, a highlight as we got in. Well, we're in the right place. <laughs> Hey, here he is. I, Phil, I, Phil, I, Phil, come I in, come in, come in. I would look better with Come in, Phil, Phil, Phil. Can try these on? Oh, yeah. Are they these, are, these are Christina Wayborn glasses. And we could do with a couple of glasses. Oh, my God. I do, I do feel, I feel more Roger than right, Christina. Right. There yeah. you go. I should, be, yeah. I should be, like, doing, you know, uncovering some microchip in the snow, I reckon. You could do that. <laughs> Favourite songs, favourite renditions, what, you, uh, what, what stood out for I you? will always lean towards You Know My Name, the boat chase from um, The World Is Not Enough right at the beginning, but my absolute favourite moment would probably be Writing on the Wall only because it was dedicated to me. Oh, I was, I know! So look, how do you find tonight? Bet highlights, what do you find? My the highlights were Live and Let Die, sweet. Obviously, Kerry belting it out at the end. Licence to Kill, which was absolutely... Born to sing that, absolutely. She was. I mean, she does a better version than the actual version. The one that gave me the goosebumps was um, Grammys Are Forever. Oh. That gave me goosebumps. That really gave me goosebumps. It was amazing. No Time to Die, their, their version of it was just incredible. Um, Where else would you hear that? The best thing I think, the Live and Let Die Suite, was absolutely incredible. The sweets for me, because I, I, I've had the pleasure of seeing Key the Music a few times now. I'm so a virgin. I'm doing, are you I'm a, all right? I'm a key oh, sorry, virgin, Mr. Min. So it was too like, much to take in, right? Oh my God. So I've seen a lot of those songs performed before, but the sweets from from Rush with Love, Octopussy, and Live and Let Die. But the Live and Let Die, as, as iconic as it is, it was just outstanding. That was my standout. Live and Let Die Suite and Octopussy Suite just. Smashed it. Oh, the Octopussy Suite is and another that one. Octopussy Suite, yeah. And uh, Living That Die Suite, yeah. Out of the park, they absolutely really smashed good. it. The sweets were just sublime. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. For me, Living That Die is my favourite soundtrack. So to hear those songs, those pieces of music, there on stage, performed so well. George Martin was in the George, room. George Martin was in the room. It really was. Credit to Warren because they just had like one rehearsal. I know. Incredible. It was like yeah, one yeah, one one playthrough together, and then it's, they smashed it absolutely out of the park. You could really hear the George Martin elements oh, yeah, percolating yeah. through, which I wasn't necessarily thinking about when watching the film. But you could really hear George Martin, oh. the, you know, through McCartney, obviously coming through. Most underrated score. In any really? film, I think. I, I completely I love it. agree. It's great fun. Yeah. It's got depth. It's got, you know, it's got a bit of aggression. It's got absolutely yeah. everything. And it took you back to those scenes in the film, Bond meets Solitaire, and you're like, oh, you're in the scene, aren't you? I'm totally. Where he says absolutely. the line, the name's Bond, James Bond. No. <laughs> well, to be honest, I was never a fan of uh, the Quantum of Solace song, Another Way to Die, but the way Q the music does it. Yeah, it made me a fan of the song. I think it's uh, Ryan's on the wall is one of them as well. Yes. They make that yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. They made it better. Matt they does made a great job on that. And yeah. also, uh, my favorite Bond movie is License to Kill. And when the show was over, I told my girlfriend, "Oh, shame nice. we didn't do License to Kill." <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it's like, 
the encore, what? license to kill. And yeah. I'm like, yes! It happens. And yes! And she smacked, Carrie absolutely yeah. smashed yeah. it. She's yeah, brilliant. they did. Were there any songs that you thought, oh, I wish they played that, you know, because they, you know, they, you've seen uh, the shows in the past? I mean, I do have a soft spot for Moonraker. Goldeneye, maybe Goldeneye. I know. Maybe Goldeneye, that was one that I was looking forward to. Maybe Goldeneye. A bit of Tina Turner. I can always listen to Tina Turner in my own time, but you know, that, that one is amazing. I was worried License to Kill is perhaps my favourite. I was getting worried. But, but the encore, come on. She brought it off, Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. Came through for you, Tom. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that. It was a great night, though. Yeah. It was a great night. Um, have one of these. These are one of the things that we've given out to everybody that came on the uh, the trip with us. Oh, thank you, Dan. So uh, have a little souvenir. Oh, you're a star. Absolutely. Legend. Daniel Gaster, thanks so much. Thank you. Moments like this, they bring everyone together and make you appreciate what we have and what, what's been built. Absolutely, absolutely. You must see these songs live because, as Fletcher's saying, you get goosebumps. It's ele electric. The spine is absolutely amazing. Uh, Again, any Bond fan, come back for more, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Really They're on tour. You must, you must, you must buy tickets. Yeah. Seriously, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Absolutely okay. amazing. I hope everyone in QD Music is on cloud nine yeah, because yeah. Uh, they deserve it. Yeah, I know they're going to be uh, planning at uh, Pinewood Studios. Isn't oh, it? wow. Yeah. And I don't want to give that away right now because I want to get my tickets to <laughs> But you just do. Is it the out? You must go and see these guys. They right. are the best. Yeah. And well done to Warren and the gang because they, yeah. they raised yeah. in a fantastic Thanks job. Thanks for coming back. And actually, yeah, we, there is hope in the Bond community. Yes. Seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I'm here with Kerry, who has just smashed it out the park! Unbelievable! I, I've said to the other guys, I'm a, I'm a cute music virgin, but oh my god, am I converted. My cherry has definitely been popped, been popped absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. I mean, Thank you. I thought it would be the actual main themes that would really get me going, and like, oh my god. But I've been fist bumping and like welling up, and the most reaction I've had was from the like the overtures like the um the um um the uh octopus year and the um uh, live and let die overtures yeah. really got me going but your voice oh my god oh. I think you, I mean it's been said before but you do actually exceed what was actually put on the soundtracks I think your voice is incredible that's a big statement no it's that's true though I mean I, I got, everyone's been saying it seriously oh, you do you. have an incredible no. voice thank you how did you guys, how did you get together with Warren in the first place? So, we, Warren had a, a, well, still has a band called the London Show Band, which is a, um, a, a like a party band, we play a lot of weddings and corporate What dudes. sort of tunes, what sort of music? Everything, like car wash, like oh, the wow. disco funk tunes, and then up to like the present day tunes. So I'm still in that band with him. Um, and then he just came, he said, I've had an idea one day. This was... 19, yeah, about okay. 19, <laughs> years ago. Um, he said, I've, I've, you know, he was obviously a massive Bond fan, still is, and he said, I've had an idea, I'd like, no one's doing it, I really want to, to, to kind of play all the Bond themes and, and make it a, a thing. Would you be up for, for doing it? And I was like, yeah. Are you a, are you a Bond, I mean, yeah, are you a Bond fan? Um, Ish. More of the music. The music. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. Um. Uh. So not really up on on Bond, but we appreciate. We did the whole. Have you know, seen the films. But do you have a particular film. era that you like? I mean, are you? I mean, for example, are you a like, John Barry fan as opposed to a David Arnold fan as opposed to you know the Newman yeah, era or? Yeah. So the John Barry era. Yeah. That really. suits your voice though. Yeah. Really. Oh um, my god. Admittedly, not as much until I started doing this. Then I kind of really appreciated everything. But I'm still kind of learning about, you know, when Warren comes up with these these scores and and these incidental uh, pieces of music that I've never even heard before. He does like, tease out these really yeah. kind of like. I mean, there are there, there are there are pieces we you know not tonight, but I've been looking up online and there are. There are pieces you played for other gigs, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so obscure. Yeah. But oh my god, okay, oh yeah. There's a, the the piece um, that you didn't play tonight, but 
It was the uh, the the, um, the the music at the end of uh, License to Kill, which I think is one of your favourites. What License? Yeah, it's one of my favourite songs to yeah. sing. Absolutely. But I mean, I I never really paid much attention to. It. I have to be honest. I got distracted by Carrie Lowell's billowy um, parachute dress at the end of License to Kill, <laughs> and I didn't really pay that much attention to it. But. Yeah, you you absolutely. I've heard yeah. you singing that. It's an incredible rendition. Yeah, it's. But I obviously was aware of that song before because it was it was uh, uh, you know quite a big hit. Um, but it's just such an honour to pay tribute to all these incredible artists over the years that have had the uh, honour of recording a Bond theme because what artist. You know, to be asked to record the the next Bond theme, any artist, that's such a, a an incredible honour, isn't it? So to then be able, and and this is the thing with us, we're not, you know, I don't go out on stage and try and sound like um, no, 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 Adele you are you. Try and sound no, like absolutely. Shirley Bassey. If we are a tribute to the music of, um, and Warren being such a Bond fan really brings out. You know, you can see it kind of oozes and pours yeah. out of, of every. But you every, are sorry. you are doing you. You're not like doing a pastiche of you know. You're not doing. No, that, that, that's exactly it. Like I say, it's 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 a, a, a complete tribute to to the to the to the artist, to the music, to the writers, to everything. Yeah. You know, but it so. shines through, and it really you know. And in, I said before, it, in some case, many cases, you are better than the original. And you know, a lot of people are saying, "I hate to say it, man. I'm a big Bond fan. I love the, you know, but some incredible renditions, some incredible performances, and it really does, you know, seeing it live as well really electrifies it and brings it to the fore. But hats off, really, uh, you must see these guys live. I but it wouldn't be anything without those guys behind me like as a vocalist to stand and have that standard of musicianship behind you is is you know you just feel it and they're all fans yeah, and they're, they're all absolute professionals yeah. and you can see they're enjoying themselves as well they're obviously enjoying the, you know and the reaction from the crowd as well it, I'm, I'm sure it's sort of it's a, you know it's a, vir a circle of virtue you know that everyone, you know, the audience is involved and the, the, the performers are involved and just escalates and escalates and it just really, you know, brings out the best in everybody, really. Every time, we, every time we do a show, we get that reaction. We get standing ovations and you just feel the, it's just electrifying in, in the room. You just feel it and, it, and it's, it's just such an honour to, to be able to do this. Well, it was... It's amazing to experience it tonight. So, Kerry, thanks Thank so much. You. That's a legend. Mwah. Mwah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hey, hey. I'm here with the man, the legend for tonight. I mean, Warren, thanks <laughs> so much for tonight. Oh, oh my. Thank you. Oh, my God. I mean, I've been singing your praises, you know, with the other guys. We've been chatting, but, you know, but really. All hope was lost for the bomb community a year, just just over a year ago. We thought, you know, that it was all over, and I hadn't had the chance to see you because I was all set to come and see you at the, the Majesty's yeah. Theatre yeah. back in October last year, and I couldn't make it. I had, you know, family commitments and so on, so I was absolutely gutted. I mean, what what, what were the your, your the reasons? I don't want to go into too much detail, but what were the reasons you thought, you know, that you had to let things, you know, sort of go lay to rest last year? I mean, there were so many reasons that, that it would be almost impossible to really do it justice in this sort of setting and, and kind of get it all across. Sure. But I mean, we, we were really battered and bruised after COVID, you know, we had a lot of debt. Um, and I, I had I personally had a few sort of health concerns that at the time I wasn't sure quite what my future was going to be with playing and what have you, hearing issues, you can probably see I'm wearing hearing aids. Um, but also, uh, on top of that, really, I, I kind of had a feeling that at some point we were going to come to a point where we might be outstaying our welcome. That was always a concern for me. We've been going for 19 years, it's been a long, long time. And I've always sort of been concerned that we didn't stay longer than people wanted us to. And I think the thing that happened, we gave it 18 months and said to people, we'll be finishing in 18 months, so that people had the opportunity to sort of say goodbye, something sort of, we had the opportunity to say goodbye. 
But what happened was that over those 18 months, the passion just got more and more and more. And when we finished that last show, everyone was just saying, you can't give it up. It's just, you know, it's not the right time. And we were saying it in the band as well. So here we are, you know, we were persuaded to come back and we're going to stick around, certainly for a good few more years. And then, you know, we'll just see where the future holds. But whilst we've got this incredible support and people are so passionate and they're coming from all over the world for this show, how can we not, how can we not, you know, keep it going when there's such a, a real demand for it? Well, I mean, tonight I'm sure has shown you the love that yeah. we all have. I mean, the groundswell of, you know, of passion and love for what you guys, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, we, I, as I say, I'm, I'm a, you know, I, I wished I'd been there last year and I was absolutely gutted. But, you know, um, when, you, when you announced that you were going to be doing, I mean, are you starting to tour? Is this going to be, you know, the, an ongoing thing? Yeah, well, we are doing a, a smallish tour next year, sort of seven, eight, maybe 10 dates. And then the year after that, we're hoping to start to ramp it up, you know, to do a lot more. But we'll just kind of see how we go. But, you know, the important thing was that, I mean, we've just done this one show this year. And obviously this has been a real community event, getting everyone together. And I think we'll try and do that every year where we kind of celebrate anniversaries and have guests. And then we'll do the tour around that where we'll go out with the 13-piece orchestra and play all the songs and give everyone all the hits. And then these big ones, we'll do some Q medleys and what have you. So that's the plans. Oh. I need to get over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you to see, have a breathe. Exactly, <laughs> breathe, have a kip. I mean, tonight, I mean, as I say, I was a complete virgin. I wish I'd seen last year, but I was, you know, tonight was my first night with the experience. And it was what I expected, you know, in fact, the fact that it was an amazing, you know, wall of bond amazingness. But there were, there were, there were, there were, there were pieces in there that I didn't know I loved. That's what the, the vibe I've had from other people. Mm. But there were also, I mean, your, and I've said it, I'm sorry guys if I'm repeating myself, but the Octopussy Suite and the Live and Let Die Suite, oh my goodness, <laughs> unbelievable. And they were just one rehearsal, one playthrough with the, with the band. You absolutely smashed it out of the park. I mean, I mean, I thought I'd be like, oh, the, the, the theme tunes would be the ones, or the, maybe there was, you know, like, but no, those were the ones that really resonated. They really did, you know, electrify the audience. How did you, I mean, obviously Octopussy's 40th you know, anniversary, they're, they're the anniversary skin, but how do you pick the pieces that you think would resonate with the Bond audience? Well, I think first and foremost, I'm a huge Bond fan myself, so sure. I, I've always approached it as if I was going to one of these, what would I want to see? And then it's also finding a line and, and just, you know, finding those little things that I know that, that's going to tip people over the edge for their passion and what I know, think they're going to love. Um, and obviously, I mean, you know, we were marking the anniversaries this year, so those pieces kind of picked themselves, really. But yeah, I mean, really, it's just trying to connect with with the fans, which I am one. You know, I could, I kind of have the ability to sit on both sides of it. Even when I'm playing in it, I kind of sit there thinking, "This is great." I mean, I was, you see me, I was grinning. <laughs> you were beaming. Because, I could see. I mean, how the brilliant is it to play oh. that stuff? You know, like living and die, oh. particularly the sweet. You know, I can enjoy it as a fan as well as the fact that I'm playing and organizing it all so I was What's it like on stage at that moment I mean I yeah. can you know I mean I mean you're you're in the RAF you know, and you're a trumpeter but I mean being on stage and having the whole band around you everyone in in, in unison it must be an amazing sensation it, it is it is but then also you have to kind of also kind of I was talking about this last night I have to kind of suppress that fan a little bit because I've got to kind of make sure that first and foremost we deliver for everybody else you know, because if I allow that fan to kind of bubble over, I would get carried away <laughs> and not concentrate. Boy, like, <laughs> yeah, not concentrate, you sure. know. So there, there's so many emotions going through. And having done this now for a good few years, I've kind of learned how to control it. And I mean, I all up to the show and all the way afterwards, the fan will really enjoy it. When I watch it back, I will really, really enjoy it. But in the moment, you know, it's about really just focusing and making sure everybody else is, knows what they're doing and is able to deliver. Because ultimately, there's guys like yourself and everybody else watching. I want them to go away having that that real high, that real buzz. That's what it's all about, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, talking to absolutely everybody tonight. They they are, you know, we're still buzzing. I'm still fizzing from the, the excitement. Um, I looked at your list. You know, you put on your on um, your own personal um, Facebook page. You know, your you know we had the Bond lists going out about your ordering your, your oh, yeah. Bond film. But you did it for your Bond soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know. 
I have to say, you know, my my, uh, we, we I think we chime in the same. I'm not a massive fan of the Newman yeah. soundtracks, and you yeah. put Spectre and Skyfall fairly near, and then yeah. Gold Golden Eye. Yeah, Eric Serra has a lot to answer for, really. <laughs> but you put them at the end of the list. I'm not surprised yeah. that he didn't feature. They didn't feature massively in your. Do you, I mean, uh, do you have any love at all for the for the the Newman uh, the soundtracks? Ooh. No. Yes, I. I do actually. There are some parts in it. I mean, the opening sequence in the Day uh, of the Dead, kind yeah, of, yeah, amazing. Maybe, yeah. And there's some operas, the opera scene, uh, not the opera, but there's, uh, there's some choir sounds in when they're having to chase through Rome, sure. which I really, really love. And actually, um, in Skyfall, uh, voluntary retirement's a really, really good, really good track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's some, there are some other good stuff in there, but overall, I don't feel that it, it resonates with me like the Barry and the Arnold scores, actually in some of the others as well, you know, as we heard tonight, I, I love the George Martin score. So sure. there are other That's ones. shone through, that's what we've been talking about. George Martin was in the house tonight when they're, with the living that died. <laughs> it really, seriously, I was talking to you know, next to me, though, you could hear George Martin coming, right guys, having fun. Yeah. But no, George Martin was definitely, you could feel his presence there in the room. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. So yeah. moving forward, you've yes. said you've got, you've got uh, concerts coming up yeah. um, next, uh, you can take a breather. Yeah. But, but coming up, there will be more opportunities for, for people to see key music because... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the most important thing for anyone watching really is to, to keep an eye on our website. And on that website, I, you heard me say this oh. in the concert, but if you go on the website, there's a friend scheme there, which you click on support and you sign up for the friend scheme, it's free. And it's the best way to keep up with the news and you get actually get the best seats on there and, and parties like tonight, you know? So um, yeah, make sure you go and sign up on that. And, that. and also you can see all the dates on there. There's a see the show tab on there as well, which gives you all of the, the dates. Absolutely, we'll, we'll put all the links down below in the description, but definitely, definitely, Check these guys out live. It was amazing tonight. With I'm still I'm still fizzing and the guys are still partying inside. But Warren, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank what you. an absolute, absolute legend. Thank and you. guys, if you've enjoyed tonight, please do smash the like and subscribe buttons, flip on notifications. But for now, this has been Warren Ringham and Blair Ballard for the Bon Vivant, bidding you very bond farewells. Stay safe, my very good friends. Thanks again, Thank Warren. Thank thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time.